So you want to create some free and amazing AI art and you want to know what the best tools are to get the job done, but you're not sure where to start. Or you're the person who's been pushing off installing Comfy UI because it looks super complicated and you love Automatic 11.11. I get it. Automatic 11.11 shares a special place in my heart as well, given that most of my content was made with Automatic 11.11. And I get that you would prefer an actual interface instead of the madness that Comfy UI has, but everyone's developing on Comfy UI now and a lot of the methods and techniques are shifting so it's definitely a good idea to get into Comfy UI today. In either scenario, you come to the right place and we're starting from the ground up on Comfy UI in 2024. Also, I always put chapters in my videos so you can skip right to the meat and potatoes if you're advanced and you don't need the context. But you might miss important information like the fact that this is an installation tutorial for NVIDIA GPUs only. If you have an AMD, there's some other methods out there but it's definitely not the norm. And you'll have the option to run your CPU which will be about 10 times slower and that's on a Ryzen 9. So if you have anything lower than that, you can imagine how slow it could be. Sorry, my AMD bros, it sucks, but it seems to be the direction that all AI is taking, not just AI art and comfy UI. Everything is NVIDIA and that's largely due to their CUDA cores and CUDA drivers. It's a long story. First things first, what the hell is comfy UI and why should I or you use it? Comfy UI is a complex QGIS tool, quantum geographic information system, which in our use case is an interface that allows us to access comfy UI libraries or files like stable diffusion models or much more popular now flux models. It uses node-based workflows similar to what you would see in Unreal 5's blueprinting, but instead of blueprints, we create workflows. This node-based system gives the user infinite possibilities to do some amazing things with AI art, AI video generation, upscaling, base repair workflows, workflows to fix old pictures, and even amazing creative upscales like upscaling a PS1 game like this into the future and much, much more. Art is generated on Coffee UI by uploading models slash checkpoints or in the new flux models case unit slash convolutional neural networks to comfy ui's folder and then using comfy ui's interface to call them i.e select them from the drop down menu and i'm not sure how you and unit became convolutional neural but someone fact check me on that in the comments and enlighten us if there's any logic behind it i have no doubt that you will by combining models lauras embeddings upscalers ip adapters control net and all sorts of wonderful tools you can outperform a lot of the paid ai art options you try getting Dolly 3 to strike a pose that you want without having the use of control net or get mid journey to do an exact style transfer without an IP adapter or get those generators to create long strings of text without the flux dev model. Good luck there, buddy. To get started, just head over to Comfy Anonymous, Comfy UI's GitHub page. Now, you shouldn't be in any other page, and all the links for this will be in my description, so you won't have to get lost. Just go ahead and click on those links. Now scroll down about halfway in the page until you see the big words installing and right under it, you'll see the word windows at a blue hyperlink for direct link to download. Actually just press control F and then search direct link to get there fast and then go ahead and click on that link so you can download comfy UI. As you can see now it's downloading and this is about 1.5 gigs around that size. So it's gonna take a second here. Now, if you don't have an unzipping file, or if you download this and you can't do anything with it, then you'll need to get something like seven zip right below the direct download link there's a 7-zip link and you can click on that to go ahead and get 7-zip and install it it's free software so easy install now go to where you downloaded comfy ui and just go ahead and extract it anywhere on your pc i'm going to unzip it right here for illustration but i'm going to cut and paste it into my documents folder later but you do whatever you like and congrats, you have installed Comfy UI and you can actually start the tool now with the run NVIDIA GPU file here in the main folder. But we don't want to do that because we want to install a manager and add a model so we can actually create art after running it. Now, the first time you run this, it's going to take a little bit longer and you're also going to get this Windows protected your PC. Go ahead and click on more info and then run anyways. And it's safe. If you use the links that I use, you're going to start to see this with a lot of products that come from GitHub. You have to just make sure it's the right link and that a lot of people have adopted the software and it's mainstream now. Comfy UI, definitely mainstream. All right, so let's go ahead and install the manager. So go to the Comfy UI manager site located in my video description and click on the green drop down here on the page. And then you'll have the option right here to download the zip file. 
Once you've downloaded it, go into your download folder and right click on the zip file you downloaded and extract it into your Comfy UI folder, custom nodes folder. Notice that the Comfy UI folder is inside the Comfy UI Windows portable NVIDIA folder and it's inside another folder after that. So make sure you're in the Comfy UI custom nodes folder. Very important here because there's a lot of subfolders and you might think the Comfy UI is just the main root folder. Now that's one way to install the manager, but I recommend that you download a tool called Git, which will be in my video description. Install it with all the default options, then go back to the manager's GitHub repository right here. Click on the green code button again and click on the double squares to copy the link to this site. Now don't just copy the link from my video description because YouTube adds a redirect and some extra characters to the link, so you don't want that. Now that you've copied the link, go back to Comfy UI, the folder, and then go into Comfy UI custom nodes folder, and then click in the folder address bar right up here, and then type in CMD and press enter. A command prompt should have popped up and you'll be in a default directory of your custom nodes folder. If you look at this right here, now all you have to type is git clone, just like this, and then right click in the command prompt or click in the box here and press control V to paste the address that you copied from the manager site. So it should read git clone and then the address just like this. Just make sure what you're looking at on my screen looks like your screen. So that's just the address to the repository and it'll throw everything into that custom nodes folder. So this will automatically send all the files that you need into your custom nodes folder and it'll have the most current version. And you're also going to need git later. If you run into a lot of problems, it might be because you don't have git or you're going to have to install a version of Python, which is 3.0. 10 instead of the using the portable version but I haven't had any problems but I am not you and I don't know what computer you have so if you do run into problems those are two things troubleshooting things you can do but congrats now you have the manager installed alrighty let's install stable diffusion 3 now because it's the latest but not the greatest let me explain it's is the only model that requires you to fill out a form to use and if you want to use it for commercial sales you'll have to fill out a second form which is not great. I'll leave all the links in the description, but if you read this license update here and you scroll to the bottom right here, you'll see that commercial users need to self-report your earnings. And you don't have to pay anything unless you earn over $1 million in revenue, but you will have to fill out this brief form and the links right here on this article, which will also be on my video description. The other models like 1.5 and SDXL won't have this contract, so you can just download them outright from Hugging Face or elsewhere. There is a 2.0 and 2.1 model, but uh, we don't talk about 2.0 and we uh, pretend it never happened. So click on the SD3 Hugging Face link that's in my description to fill out the non-commercial license to grab the model. You might have to register for a free Hugging Face account to accept, but oddly enough, it was able to detect that I accepted the agreement when I wasn't signed in, so maybe not. But once you fill out the form, you'll have access to it and you can go to files and versions over right here. It's a tiny tab, easy to miss. And this is where you're gonna download the files. Now, if you're new to AI art and you just wanna know the one file that you need, it'll be this one, the SD3 medium include clips, safe tensors, and this will be your model slash checkpoint. And it just has the safe tensors extension because it protects you from pickling, which is a type of Python attack. So to get this file, this 5.97 gigabyte file, you'll just click on this arrow right here. So this is the down arrow underline here. You will just click on that and it'll start downloading as you can see right up here. Now it seems like I can't download because I wasn't logged in. So let me try that. Yep. So I had to be logged in to download it. I already have this, so I'm going to cancel that download, but that's basically the only file that you need here. Now, one thing to know is that there's this TXXL FP16, float point 16, and the FP8. And the FP8 should have more coherency and generate better art than the one that we're downloading. And FP16 would be an improvement over that, but it will take longer for them to generate. And then we have the medium safe tensors without the clips. And what that means is that you can actually download the clips or the text encoders right here separately and you can use a workflow that accesses them separately. We're not gonna do all that, so we're just gonna download this one right here and you're good to go. But you'll also have to get some of these comfy example workflows because we're not gonna create our own workflows. If you're starting out, that's the last thing you wanna do. Just download people's workflows so you kind of get a sense of what's going on and then you can start creating workflows for yourself. So click on this and download all three of these by clicking on the down arrow here. So we have the most basic workflow, we have a multi-prompt workflow, and we also have a an upscaling workflow, which is to improve the image resolution and quality. So all three of these workflows should be in your download folder along with this SC3 medium including clip. All right, I now have the download folder open and I have the SC3 medium including clip safe tensors, which is the checkpoint that we downloaded and the three workflows. 
And I have the Comfy UI Windows Portable NVIDIA folder, which is where we extracted Comfy UI. So I'm going to go ahead and put the folder side by side and open Comfy UI over here on the right. And our download folders is here on the left. So now that we're in Comfy UI Windows Portable, click on Comfy UI, go to Models right here, and then open the Checkpoint folder. And this is where we're going to put our SD3 medium, including clips model checkpoint file. So just drop it in there and we're good. Unfortunately, it's a bit confusing because models are called checkpoints and textual inversions are actually called embedding. So some words are used interchangeably and this is one of them. Now I just need to go back to the main comfy UI Windows portable folder. And in here, you'll see run NVIDIA GPU. Now take note that this is going to be your start button. Every time you run, this is going to be the button that you click unless you have an AMD then you're clicking run CPU. So go ahead and click on run NVIDIA GPU and then you'll see this pop up. And the first time you run this, it's going to take quite a while because it's going to download some missing things. But if you have used this before, it should only take about 10, 20 seconds. As you can see, it automatically opened up Comfy UI and this is what it looks like. And so this is a Flux IP adapter workflow. So we're not going to use this. First things first, Go into the manager here and you should have this because we installed it together. If you skip that step, then you could skip this step as well too. But click on manager and then go ahead and go to update all. And you want to update everything here to make sure it jives with all the new stuff that you put into the system. Now, as you can see, it didn't update. So it recommends that I restart here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on restart and click OK. So it's going to temporarily kick me out and start it again. All right. So it refreshed the page and it's running again. And so we're all updated. So let's go ahead and use the workflows that we downloaded. So the first way to do it is open up the folder that you have the workflow in right here. And we're going to use this basic workflow. Just grab it and drag it into Comfy UI. And as you can see, it loaded it. Now, your second option of adding a workflow is to click on the load button and then find the workflow. Ours is right here, which is the basic prompt. So just go ahead and click on it. And that's the second way to add it. All right. In Comfy UI to navigate, you can hold the middle mouse button to pull the screen around, or you could left click anywhere in the blank space to also do the same thing. You can scroll down to zoom all the way out. But if you zoom out too far, you're not going to see any information information in the nodes or you could zoom in which you should do to work on each individual node. Now the first thing you need to do is actually load the checkpoint that you downloaded which was the SC3 medium including clips and so go in here and click on this. Now I have this extra one because I downloaded the FP8 model just to play with it but go ahead and choose the right model and you can see I put notes in here. If you double click anywhere on Comfy UI you can actually pull up things and search for it like the note and then you could add it to Comfy UI. And then you could right click on it to change the color. And you could do this with any node. I don't need this. I'm going to remove it, but it doesn't hurt anything. As long as it's not connected to anything, it doesn't hurt anything, including this node right here, which is not functional right now because we removed the clip. But since we downloaded the model with the clip, we're actually going to connect our clips to the negative and the positive prompt. So if you scroll down a little bit or pull down a little bit. The green prompt is our positive prompt. And this is what we wanted in your picture. And then in the red prompt, that's the negative prompt. And that's the stuff we don't want ending up in our picture. And then you can change the batch size, how many pictures are rendered at once, as well as the resolution of the render. And if you're having trouble generating, you might want to change this to 512 instead of 1024. So let's go ahead and attach the clip to our positive and negative prompt by going to clip up here where this yellow dot is. Just grab it and drag it right here to the yellow dot on the positive prompt. Now we're going to do the same thing to the negative prompt and drag it right here to the yellow dot. And there you go. And then you could also drag the note around to just kind of see that it's connected. The string goes up here now. So we have our load here and then we have our input here and we're not going to focus on anything in the middle, but there is a manual that will go over conditioning and anything else aside from the stuff in the middle, you could actually hover over it and it'll usually give you a description of what it does just like that. So now we're going to move on over to the K sampler. And this is something that most people should be used to if you were in automatic 1111, the steps, the CFG scale and sampler name, scheduler and denoise, except denoise is very different in comfy UI than it is in automatic 1111. So steps is essentially the quality. The higher you go, the more 
quality or sharpness you should have. CFG scale is how well it adheres to your prompt, which is the, the green positive prompt over here versus how how much you want the computer to take over. Sampler name, um, there's just a lot of samplers that you can choose from, try them all out. And then you have your variational auto encoder, which we're not gonna go into, but some models require their own VAE decoder. And then of course we have the output all the way in the right. So if you zoom out on the right, on the very far right, we have the output and then the very far left we have load models and input so let's scroll into input and then make sure that there's something here in the text encoder which is our positive prompt so we have some information in there and then we also have something in a negative prompt by the way i'll leave a link in the description on a tool that will help improve your prompt so you just put what you want in here you submit generate and then it'll create a better prompt for you that you can copy and try out in order to generate you'll just click on q prompt and you'll see that it we have one in the queue right now and then you can click on view queue and you can see how many are running or if it's running at all another way to check is to open up your command prompt and as you can see here it's 57 percent done so with the normal sd3 model it takes about maybe 10 seconds to generate a picture but i'm generating four so it took uh took about a minute i'm going to change it back to sgm uniform and it should take a lot less time one thing you'll notice there's also a green bar here to show the progress of the generation and although this model looks a little bit better it's a little bit weird on the hands. All right, this one's a little messed up too, but I have four images. So if you want to see all images at once, just go ahead and close out the picture and you'll see a preview of each picture. This one's wild. It actually has a hand coming out of the house. That's interesting. This one's a, a lot better. This I think this is the best out of the bunch, even though the fingers are a little bit long, but it did get subscribe. And so that's a positive there. And so I would just play with the settings to try and improve this picture or something like it. And so another way to cycle through the pictures is clicking this down here and this will go to the next one all right so let's try the fp8 model and all we have to do is go to the load checkpoint and change it to the fp8 or whatever custom model that you have all right so i'm going to leave everything the same and then queue the prompt now while that's queued i'm actually going to go to civet ai and download this atomics sd3 and so this is a custom model and you could find it on civet ai by going to models and clicking on filters and then clicking on sd3 to see all the sd3 models that they have you can also go to shape AI, but Civit AI is definitely the bigger site with the most models. So just go ahead and click on the model that you like and then click on download. And then I'm going to put it in the models folder like I did with the SD3. Here's the Atomics SD3. I'm going to go ahead and cut it from my downloads folder and then go into my comfy UI folder, comfy UI, models, checkpoints, and just paste it inside here. Now I should be able to access it. Now these are the FP8 results and uh, they're not any better. So I mean, they're okay but they're all kind of messed up. And this is why we normally go for custom checkpoints or mess with the case sampler to improve the images that we have. All right, so let's go ahead and use the new custom model that we downloaded. So it's not available yet. So just go ahead and click refresh. And as you can see, it's an option here now, Atomics SD3, just go ahead and click on it. And then I'm going to leave everything the same and then cue the prompt. And you always want to check the command prompt to make sure nothing's messing up. All right, so this model provided better results in terms of spelling, but the characters are still similar and the hands are really messed up. So it seems like a step backwards in, with hands with SD3, but uh, maybe I just got to change some of the settings here. Okay, so I raised the CFG scale and it seems to have done a much better job in terms of hands. Now subscribe is messed up, but just keep in mind SD3 is not as good as the flux model in terms of spelling, but it did it perfect right here. But unfortunately the hands are messed up. Okay, so I think you get the drill and you understand how to create AI art with Comfy UI now. But just a quick refresher, you're gonna run Comfy UI by going into the root folder, Comfy UI Windows Portable and click on run NVIDIA GPU. Use this to run Comfy UI every time. Unless you're an AMD or Intel graphics card user, then you're gonna have to click run CPU which is going to be much slower than running it through an NVIDIA GPU. Once you click on run, Comfy UI should pop up automatically just like this. And really the only things that you need to do is go to load models and choose a model and go into your positive prompt and enter something, which is the green one right here. And then when you have everything set up the way you want it, just click on Q prompt to generate an image and scroll on down to the right side to see what the output is. Once you queue up the generation, you can click on this to see what's generating. You can also open your command prompt to see how far it went and scroll on over to the right to to see your output. For the case sampler, I like DP, MPP, 2M, and SGM uniform. The CFG I like to keep between 3 and 6, and the steps I like to keep between 20 and 50. But it really depends on your settings and the model that you're using. I will also leave a link in the description.
description for Civit AI where you can get a bunch of new models, custom models, LoRa's, embeddings, and a bunch of cool tools to help you with your AI art, as well as some sites where you can get some neat workflows. And there's a lot of different workflows that you can use. Just know that some of these utilize some of the tools that you get on Civit AI. So make sure you pay attention to the requirements. Like this one's for Flux, so this is definitely not going to work with SC3. But if you want to learn how to work with Flux, I actually have a Flux installation video in my video description. So you can check that out as well. Flux is superior to Stable Diffusion and it's on par with the paid models, if not better. However, it takes a really long time to generate, so your generation is going to take a minute or two. But they're starting to create workflows just like this one. Flux Speed Workflow LoRa's High Res Fix. So this is definitely going to speed things up and lower the requirement for VRAM. It's almost like a free mid journey, but really slow. But over time, it's going to get faster and faster until it becomes just as fast as Stable Diffusion, and it's going to have all the different tools. It already has Control Net and a bunch of other IP adapters and like this, a high res fix and LoRa's. Well, that's it for me. Hopefully this video helped you out a lot. And if it did, please leave a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. And if you'd like to learn more about AI art, AI music generation, AI video generation, go ahead and subscribe. But I want to thank you for watching this far and hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.